something peculiar happened to Britain in 2018. It stopped raining. In three short months, Britain morphed from a lush green farmer's paradise to a barren wasteland. The transformation was so stark, you could see it from space. Now this may sound mild to you, but three months of sun in Britain is essentially the apocalypse. Off! <laughs> off, you big lamp! It seems like every day we wake to find a new horror waiting. 100 degree temperatures in the Arctic Circle. Mega blazers in Australia that wipe out half a billion animals and incinerate one fifth of the continent's forests. Flooding across huge parts of Asia. Every day, some new tragedy to mourn, then quickly suppress and forget. And the most numbing part of this is that all signs are pointing to the fact that it's too late to prevent it. But it's not too late to prepare. There are glimmers of hope in this sea of despair. One such glimmer is vertical farming. Did you know that we currently use one and a half billion hectares of land for farming? That's 36% of all arable land on the planet. By adding a third dimension to farmers, we could theoretically reduce this by 98%. Awesome. So why aren't we doing it already? Well, it's expensive. You need lights and hydroponic equipment and electricity and, of course, a facility to do it in. Which is why today vertical farming is largely confined to shipping containers and old repurposed warehouses. To realise the true potential of vertical farming, we'd have to find a cheaper way of scaling up the facilities. Another glimmer. In 2016, a construction 3D printing company called Apis Corp made headlines for building the first ever 3D printed home in under 24 hours. It costs just $10,000 to make, and it uses the exact same principles as those desktop printers that are used to print cat armour and 3D memes and other things, probably. If we could find a way to use construction 3D printing to build larger structures, it could reduce the cost of vertical farming enough for it to be profitable on an industrial scale. Which is why I invented Salem, a type of construction 3D printer that uses a set of hoists to manoeuvre the extruder head. By using hoist cables instead of gantries to control the extruder, it's possible to print structures of virtually any size. From a few metres wide, all the way up to multi-storey buildings. So, I built a prototype, then taught myself to code. It's hacking time. And then I got it patented. I started to think, maybe it was a smart idea to quit my well-paid corporate job to play with 3D printers after all. But I'm still only one person. And in my hands alone, any progress made would be still too little and too late for it to really matter. But then it occurred to me, I'm not one person. None of us are. Not really. Not anymore. We're now connected in ways that humans just two generations ago could have barely imagined. I'm not one person. We are one people. And though the challenges we face today are indeed too great for any individual to tackle alone, together they're trivial to solve. So, Salem is open source. If you'd like to utilise the Salem concept in your own company, I not only grant you permission, but I implore you to. I know what you're thinking. 
Gee, if only there was some sort of free decentralized social media platform for crowdsourcing developing new technology concepts through open source file sharing. Mate, I've got you. Cloud Beacon is a new way to solve societal problems by tapping into the power of the human hive mind. Join the vibrant discussions being had on the forum pages. Browse the rich catalogue of unsolved problems in the challenges section. Get lost in all of the wonderful user-generated solutions in the ideas section. Or contribute to one of the many active projects by downloading and improving content, voting on other people's work, or sharing your thoughts in the comments section. Now, you probably haven't noticed, but there's something pretty crucial missing from Cloud Beacon. There's no members, and without members, Cloud Beacon is basically just a place for me to document my slow but inevitable spiral into complete madness. It can only be the powerful platform for change it was built to be if enough people join and make it one. So if you were like me, and you're not ready to go quietly into that good night, then join me on Cloud Beacon. And let's rage together. Because here's the thing. It's not too late to change course. It's not too late to change our future. We can still change. We can. All we have to do is choose it. When you open your hands to catch, I wind up with only blisters and bruises. When you step out of the phone booth and try to fly, and the very people you want to save are the ones standing on your cape. When your boots will fill with rain and you'll be up to your knees in disappointment, and those are the very days you have all the more reason to say thank you. Because there's nothing more beautiful than the way the ocean refuses to stop kissing the shoreline, no matter how many times it's sucked away. You will put the wind in wind song. Some. You will put the star in starting over and over, and no matter how many landmines erupt in a minute, be sure your mind lands on the beauty of this funny place called life.
Go outside on a clear night and look up. What do you see? What you're staring at is the universe. Infinite and almost unbearably beautiful in its colour and complexity. Do you know something else? It's staring right back at you and seeing the exact same 